Hello everybody, welcome to Life is Chess. In today's episode, I am going to present a game between Max Ewe, the fifth world champion from the Netherlands and George Thomas of England, which was played in the year 1934, just one year before Max Ewe surprisingly defeated Alexander Alekin to become world champion. Max Ewe was a professor of mathematics who later went on to become the president of World Chess Federation. As the president of FIDE, his achievement was to organize the famous and the most uh, publicized world championship match ever between Bobby Fischer and Boris Paskey in the year 1972. Now let's go over to the game. The game started with c4 but soon transposed to queen's gambit declined after white played d4. Black plays knight f6 and white develops his bishop before playing e3. Black plays bishop e7, e3, castled, knight f3. All these moves are standard. The challenge for black is to develop the c8 bishop which is slightly passive at this point of time, black played the move knight bd7, which is the orthodox defense or orthodox system in the queen's gambit declined. Here white plays the move rook to c1. He activates his rook, he develops his pieces and he waits for black to play dc4 before he can take bishop takes c4. Black waits by playing c6 and finally white goes bishop d3. Black plays dc4, a slightly paradoxical move because this move allows white a free hand in the center. However, black initiates a maneuver which is very instructive. Black exchanges a couple of pieces and tries to free his position. Let us see how he achieves that. White plays bishop takes c4 and black uses or utilizes the vacated d5 square by putting his knight to d5, challenging the bishop on g5. Now white is obliged to take bishop e7, queen e7. White continues with his development. He castles. Black plays another very instructive move that is knight takes c3, voluntarily giving up his centralized knight in order to achieve the move e5. Note that two moves earlier, had he played e5 directly, he would have lost the d5 knight because it doesn't have sufficient support. White would simply capture knight d5, c d5, bishop d5 winning a pawn. Therefore, black played knight c3, rook c3 and only then he played the move e5. White has many options here. Nowadays, most players prefer to play bishop b3, improving the position of his bishop, relocating the bishop to c2 and also, uh, well, opening the c file for the rook. So, this is considered to be uh, the main move nowadays. However, Max Ewe went for a more forcing variation that is he exchanged on the center in the center with the hope of initiating a direct attack against black. But note the bishop on c8 which did not have a diagonal a few moves back has suddenly become active and black plans to bring out his bishop and equalize the position before taking over the advantage. However, it is white's move. White played a very risky move that is f2 to f4. He advanced his pawn, attacking the queen as well as activating the rook on f1. It is black to play and it is here that black played uh, a slightly passive move, a small mistake. He went back queen e7. 
if you look carefully at the position, white has a majority. On the king side, especially in the center, these two pawns and black has a majority of 3 against 2 on the queen side. White also has a slight lead in development because the bishop on c8 and the rook on a8 still need one move to develop. Therefore, white tries to attack before black develops his bishop. Uh, instead of the move queen e7, a better move would have been to place the queen uh, in the center of the board with the hope of putting the bishop on f5, blockading the pawns, white central pawns on uh, e4 and f4 square. Had white played bishop d3, black could simply capture the e pawn with a check and after white moves king h1, black will have to immediately rush back his queen because white is threatening a discovered check and attacks white attacks the queen so black would have to immediately go back queen e7 but in this case he would remain one pawn up instead black a uh, black should have played queen e4 instead he went queen to e7 and white played a very instructive move that is he pushed his pawn to f5 this pawn restricts the bishop on c8 it doesn't allow the bishop to become active and the only good square left for the bishop in this diagonal is d7 but it is a passive square it blocks the d, d file as well as the bishop is not very happy happily placed on d7 uh, although we feel that black should have continued bishop d7 followed by rook d8 with the hope of equalizing. Instead, black lashes out and goes for counterattack by playing b5. Black attacks the bishop on c4 and after white goes back bishop b3, black immediately pushes b4. So what is black doing? He has left his pawn on c6 unguarded, but he has opened the diagonal for his bishop. He wants to make the c8 bishop very happy even after uh, sacrificing the c pawn. His long diagonal would be opened for the bishop. Uh, in this position, if white captures rook c6, black could capture queen e3 check the e3 pawn would be left unguarded after white defends by playing king h1. Black could develop his bishop via b7 and now we see why black played the move b5 and b4 to activate the bishop on c8. So this is the position where white played a very nice move. Uh, he played the move f 6. It is an intermediate move. Before moving his rook, he sacrifices pawn. He plays an in-between move attacking the black's queen. Black captured pawn takes pawn and then white took rook takes c6. The idea is after black played queen e3, king h1, uh, the rook can capture f6, take back the pawn, but black's king would remain weakened, especially the absence of g pawn has weakened the square h6 around the black king, and also the pawn on f7 would be under fire from the bishop and two white rooks. In this position, black developed his bishop and white took rook f6. At the end of the series of moves, it now seems white has a distinct advantage because black's king is weaker than white's. Black played queen e4, threatening a checkmate with the help of the bishop on b7. Notice 
the bishop on b7 which was very passive few moves earlier has become very active suddenly thanks to black's sacrifice of pawn now white played the move queen d2 defending g2 in this position white threatens f7 as well as plans to enter into black's position by playing queen g5 check black played king h8 giving away his f pawn the pawn could not be defended anyway so white simply captured the pawn and emerged one pawn up after sacrificing his pawn with f6 in this position black tried to get counterplay he played the move rook a c8 with the idea of entering rook c2 and attacking on g2 white played the move rook f6 to f2 preventing black's entry in the white's position by rook c2 and also overprotecting the g2 square so that white's queen could be free now black attacked white's queen rook c d8 it is white to play white found out a very simple move that is queen g5 with the threat of queen f6 checkmate suddenly black's king has come under fire it is black to play he has two defenses and both the defense lose very brilliantly i would ask uh, the viewers to pause the video for a while and try to find out the winning idea for white after the move queen to d4 white had a brilliant move after queen d4 that is he would play the move bishop to d5 it is a very surprising move this move uh, well white has a discovered attack on f8 he removes the bishop from f7 attacks the rook on f8 but more importantly the move bishop d5 also closes the diagonal between the queen closes the file between the queen and the rook the rook on d8 is left unprotected after rook f2 white can simply capture the rook on d8 and get a winning position so the move bishop d5 is a brilliant move it has two tactics in mind one is discovered attack and the second one is blocking the line blocking the line of the queen which was defending the rook in the game therefore black went for the move rook to d6 defending against queen f6 met and once again i would ask all the the viewers to pause the video for a while and find out why to play and win white plays a brilliant move bishop to d5 this move consists of discovered attack as well as double attack white threatens e4 white threatens f8 if black captures rook f2 white can checkmate queen g8 in this hopeless position black resigned so we have just seen another brilliant performance by a world champion this game was a positional game where white developed his pieces very well and he combined the tactics of intermediate move discovered attack as well as blockade of line i hope you like this game keep watching life is